everybody. This is Misty with A Unique Treasure. I am coming on today to recreate this envelope that I had many requests over um, to create this. It does take a bit of time, so this is probably broken up into two videos. The first part will be doing the base, which will be a uh, will be decoupaging. We'll be applying gesso, and let's see what else to the end color. Watercolor is what I'm going to use today. You can use acrylic paints. You can use your uh, watercolor pencils and watercolor it down. You pretty much can do whatever you like to do. Once you see what I do today, you then can take off from there and let your imagination flow. So the base that we're going to do today well, does require me. I like putting acrylic gesso down. And then you can stamp once that's mostly dry and or dry. And also I am using some very inexpensive cheap watercolor paints that I got from Walmart long time ago and then of course a little bit of water to clean my brush and keep it nice and wet but what i did was i went ahead and i started i have gesso on my finger now i started doing the video already once and then i realized i didn't even tell you what i was using in the beginning so the first thing we're going to do is gesso it uh, gesso our regular envelope because this is going to be an altered envelope and an altered playing card deck card from a deck if I could get it out and it is going to be this card and this is the kitty kitty that um, I cut out from this card and we used. If you do have glares I do apologize I am actually filming a little later than I'd like to do um, but this is it. So we're going to work on the base first. You're going to get a regular envelope and you can actually um, glue this down and close up the envelope itself so that it is not going to get interfere. What I did, I, I try to pre-do, you know, cause I've done this already several times, um, the steps cut out everything I need because it does, you know, it does take a lot of my supplies, little snippets and pieces of it though, very small and actually a little bit of jewelry. Um, so, or charms. Um, You'll see as we go along, but again, we're doing the base today. So I did use a napkin to cut out, not cut out, I rip. I tear and I rip, and this is the napkin that I have used over and over again. Now I do not use large pieces like this, just as a tip you know, on a small piece like this, even though you would think it'd be nice and a fill-in, if you don't care that, you know, you're gonna be covering up most of it and people won't know that that is a flower, and you just want the color, that's fine. But for me, I kind of want you to see the little flowers like I did on here. So when I take her off, you will see the little tiny flowers and the things that I did. We're, we might not be doing the holes, I'm not sure, but we will see. I might just, for more of a beginner purpose, uh, just go ahead and cover them up with a piece of lace. But right now, let's get back to the base. So I did this already. I'm going to just do one side because I did already prep another one to completely finish. And so I've gessoed the front of this with this gesso here. And now I'm going to take my watercolor. And I usually will spray down my watercolors really nice before I even use them. But considering that these are just my craft uh, ones, I'm not real concerned with it. And I did grab my towel and I'm trying to see what I did with it. So let me get that because that's important that I have that. Okay, I just have a painter's towel that I use. Not a paint, it's not any old, it's just a, a towel that I use, nothing specific, but it is specified now for just painting. And I've kind of got a, away from the um, canvas painting. I started with painting with Jane, Jane font, because it is so simple and easy. You would be shocked at what you can do. This gesso doesn't want to come out of my brush um, by following somebody like her. She makes it so, so simple. And she has went on from doing something out of just a room in her home to now she's pretty huge. Um, and I also follow the Art Sherpa. And uh, I mean, I've actually sold paintings with her permission that I used her design, of course, uh, to people. And I just, she's like, you know, take this on your brush like this and make this stroke. And that's what I did. So, and I, and she also taught me how to use uh, palette knives, which that's my favorite kind of painting. I'm no pro, 
I know that they say when you sell a painting that makes you, you know, like a real artist, you're considered an artist in that community. But I don't believe that about myself. I just think that my higher power just really it wants me to know that, you know, hey, don't quit, you know, enjoy what you're doing. All right, let's get back to this. So I went ahead and gessoed it. This side's not gesso, so I'm going to stick with this just to give you the technique that I used. So of course, like I said, I would normally have this all nice and soaked. And so I'm going to get quite a bit of um, water on my brush and I'm going to take it over to, let's see, it's kind of funny because I think I used this blue kind of blue color last time. I'm just going to put it over here on my mat and look at it because it, to me, it is sky pretty blue, but it worked out so well over there on, on that. I think it's good that I don't use the exact mint green, but it can go with that mint look, or I could pull some of this green over into it, which I'm not going to do. But I actually just, you know, it, it's so light, and sometimes I'll, I'll even come over here to the um, edges and, and get a little bit of darker color, or leave this here to dry, you know, and if it was a little bit wetter, like if I were to come over here with my spray bottle, which I'm not sure why it's not right here to my right, um, you know, it would be easier for me to just take this and damp it like that. And, and let me show you what that would look like. I do this like quite a bit with different colors and then I would take my dryer, not on this, but on something I'm mixing colors with, like Artie Mays is the one that showed me how to do this through her videos. And then I, I let it dry a little bit and then I have more spray, different color, and then I will do parts of it. You know, I won't muddy it up, but it is so much fun, ladies. Get your sprays out, get your colors out, anything that you can liquefy or water down, and just play, you know, and don't worry. If you're worried about your hands, get gloves, but I'm not. I love being messy. I'm messy, Misty. How's that? That's probably what my channel should have been. So, Anyway, so this is the technique. You do this where you gesso both sides, you dry it, and then you just take your colors. And my top and bottom color is different. So I had a little bit of that blue down here and more pink. And I even one time mixed it with a little bit of this gesso here and let it dry. And if you let it dry almost all the way and take a little bit of stamps, that's a beautiful fill-in. So that's called, for me, warming up the page before I put stuff on it because then that is your background and it doesn't look sterile. Okay, so that is what I did there. And now I'm going to grab my envelope that we're going to be using today. Um, it is all crinkly. I really got a lot of water on it. I have pink and blue down here. I don't know if you can see that very well because in the screen it doesn't show it so well. But this is really beat up by my water and I love it. The next thing I would do now since... I had this step done is we're going to decoupage and I'm going to get everything ready for that. So now I got everything cleaned up and I'm just going to wet my brush. I know it does have a little gesso probably still in it and it's okay. A quick tip, instead of me going crazy when I did YouTube videos and trying to figure out how was I going to do that napkin again, I do this. I take another envelope. It's not gessoed or anything. I just fold it over and I will pin where I kind of think I want the napkin to go. Again, I, as I did it, I just rip up little pieces of the napkin and, and I have a kind of vision like I do like this showing through and that's where the stamping would also come in like little French writing or something like that. But I'm not really too worried about it because I have so much going on the page and it's going to cover up a lot of this empty space. So I will put the gesso, I will, um, excuse me, decoupage I'm using today, deco, uh, Mod Podge, excuse me, Mod Podge mat, and it is water-based sealer, glue and finish. So that is what we're using today. And my brush, brush is just a little wet, and I'm taking some of this, not too much, and I'm just going to go ahead and lay some down. Um, whoa. I kind of grabbed too much there because I you don't want too much on there because it will um, wrinkle worse. It'll be harder that if you need to kind of, uh, you know, pick it up and mess around with it. And I do not like putting tons on mine on the top either because I kind of like that napkin feel to be there. 
So I will now gently take some water on my brush and I will just go over the edges really nice so that I still can get, and I'm not sealing my envelope yet. I do that towards uh, the end so that if I need to open it for any reason, I can. And then there you go. I'm going to, um, I, I always do this. I don't play with it right now. I will wait until it dries some and then I will tear it right off. But if I do this, it's going to tear nicely without coming up on this side. And this way, when this dries, um, see I got a little crinkle in there. I just kind of go in there and lightly play with it with the corner of my brush until I can get it away. But I don't want to just sit there and mash um, a lot of the Mod Podge there or decoupage whichever you're using and so i'm going to do this top right side i'm going to again lay a little bit down make sure i'm covering it really well the thing i love about this tim holtz mat that i'm doing this on is it's very forgiving i can clean this up i don't have to worry about being messy the thing i don't like about it that it's black and white because even though it's nice for me to see i i don't think it's eye pleasing you know when i'm working with these colors and you see this napkin had a crease in it and I touched it to lay it down and I didn't mean to do that. All right, so I pulled the tension down here instead of trying to go in there and fix it with my fingers so much. And it still has a slight crease in it and this is lifted. So I'm now going to take a little bit of water because my fan above me is on. It probably dried a lot of that underneath and I want to reapply and reactivate that decoupage underneath or mod podge. I keep saying the wrong one. I normally would not have a straight line here because I like the tear look that I wasn't paying attention, but it'll be covered up, so that's okay. And again, this kind of crafting is so forgiving. You can forgiving, you guys can do you know basically anything you want. Now we're going to go to the bottom since I didn't find anything to fill in here, obviously. I'm going to probably lay a little bit more color down there if I don't put something there because, well, I don't want to start with the middle. Um, I like doing the sides from left to right because then if I had to change anything, it's easier for me to do that than being stuck with something that's in the middle. It'll all come together at the very end. Mod Podge, a little bit, a little bit on my brush. And then I'm going to, I want, I knew I was going to follow this line and I ripped it, um, ripped that flower there. So I'm going to put this line down first and then I'm going to make sure that I pull this at the right spot and then apply that flower down there carefully because I've got a lot of wrinkles. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of water on the tip of my brush again. And I am probably going to have to go in there and apply a little bit of glue, which I'll get from the lid here and on top of this so that that tear will lay down nicely and not fall apart. Okay, so let me go ahead and get the edge done here. See that Mod Podge, I did forget that I laid it down there. So we got to be careful. We don't open it up when we're doing the top and bottom. We just close it from a quick peek or look. And do not worry. I don't want to tell you to play with this so much because sometimes in the beginning we don't have such a light hand and we um, can tear it with adding too much water. Oh, sorry, I'm not even frame. Um, adding too much water, or too much decoupage and not enough water, okay? So this is going this way. This is how this is looking so far. It's exactly what I planned. And then I'm going to put the bottom one here. But the last time I did this video, it took 40 something minutes and I was like, oh, I've got to fix <laughs> That's not going to work. So now I know this side is going to come all the way down here. So I'm going to plan for that. I'm going to move it over just a little bit. And this one, I would probably go ahead and lay one side down first so that I don't displace it. 
and then I'm going to lay that down like so and gently do the edge. So now I know it's going to stay there. I'm going to flip this around because it helps to do that because I'm a righty. And I think it will be awkward when I work on this side then. And I do have some cognitive issues. I hate that word issues. Um, challenges, I should say. But I'm learning to overcome them. Now, see, I did lay this down and I should have started here instead of over here. But I learn my lessons as I go along or I just adjust. So, like, I don't know if that's ever going to happen again or if it's going to be exactly on, you know, the same clevis here. So, I'm happy with this. And again, I, it's so nice when you don't see uh, your plaster down so hard and it sits nice on top. And when that dries, like up here, it's going to feel more like napkin instead of slick you know, hardened down gesso. It's okay if you do that though. It's you can still pull off a pretty look. I am just I've done it enough times because I decorate my boxes when I ship things to people. And so I got a lot of gesso on my brush. I'm gonna see, you know, I haven't cleaned up my brush and I've stuck it in plenty of time. So I'm gonna see if I can get away with doing something like and I did want to start at the top, so I make sure that I get where I wanted, which is there. And then this, I uh, see it's going cockeyed on me. So I'm not seeing it right, but I do want it to be there. I got so lucky there, people. Normally that would have ripped. But I'm learning to have a lighter hand for one. Not quite wet enough underneath, but I'm going to see if I can get away with this. And add a little sticky and a little bit more water. Do like this, do like this. And the top is down, so I'm going to start with going left to right. All right, when that was meant to be for that to happen up there, I knew it was going to be longer than. You know, I did. I knew it wasn't going to reach down here when I when I was experimenting and pulling them apart. I probably will uh, let you experience me ripping something um, if I don't. There's something up here missing, even though this is going to be covered up there. I kind of like flowers to come up from the bottom, inside the pocket out. So maybe I will be able to find something to do that. Now this flower is kind of big for me, but we're going to see if I can make it work. Because I do want the color underneath there. And I want this baby flower to show. And this is something that, you know, some people say to me, or maybe one person, that, wow, that's too much detail for me. That's okay. I enjoy doing this. This is this is why I do it. I love it. I love creating beautiful things. And I love creating different things. I, why wouldn't you just put the whole napkin down? Well, you can. I just didn't want to. I usually work with darker colors, um, meaning that behind here, there would be, like I said, stamping, things like that. But I decided to try to do this without the stamping because I want to see if I can warm up the page through watercolors because now that I put this down guess what it did it made this not look so so but you can tell the difference though it's not well maybe you can't I don't know if you can see it in there it's not as white as this white envelope is on this top part so now that I got that laid down I can really look at this objectively and let me see if there is something maybe, I really do not like this straight line here. I'm so glad that that is going to be covered up or I would probably try to rip it, wet it and rip it. But I don't need to do the, all of that since, oh, look at this. It's kind of like um, a, a splurt from the bottom, right? Wouldn't that be pretty, a nice spray. I kind of wish I didn't let this come all the way out here because I see it. I see how that could just be absolutely stunning. This would be stunning on a card too. The bottom of that, see how that's, that would be popping out there? And let me see, wait, let me see. I shut this. 
how much could I get away with putting there? So I, I know this is going to have to go. Oops. Don't cut your flower, girl. And this is going to have to go because it's too far left. Let's see what else will have to go. I just don't know. Let me see something else here. And then let me see something here. See, this is going to be covered up. If it's not, I would definitely cover this in. But it's going to be covered up. And I am... I think I'm going to bring this over here. But she didn't shape leave this. Well, that will be covered up. Hmm. This is why I don't do the beginning of this whole thing on camera. Because it is way too long. Because I cannot make up my mind half the time. Nope. Just leave that alone this day. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I don't know. I might lose that big flower there. Just to have something coming out. Let me see again. What I'm see, I left a big gap here. You see that? I left a big gap, and it it works out perfectly um, with her. So it kind of, kind of makes her pop, right? So I guess I'm just gonna leave it alone, even though I don't want to. I think in order to have a tore edge, I'm gonna paste that here because I I just can't stand that tore edge. I'm gonna do it, even though I know it's gonna be covered up. It's a okay. Let me get some of this here. Oops. I mean to bump the camera. I am going to go over that with just a right here. And I'm going to just cross over that. There we go. All right, guys. Thanks for being so patient with me while I toiled and stressed and wanned over, wah, 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 over that. All right, so now we got our decoupaging down. I'm gonna give it a quick dry. Normally I like decoupaging just to sit by itself, but because of this video, we're gonna dry it. Okay, so what I did, I went ahead off camera and I sewed around it. And we are going to be done with part one. I think that this video is now 22, 23 minutes in. And I think I'm gonna tell you that I didn't do it with the other ones, but I feel the need to go around and just ink it lightly, not over, not grunge it. Just ink it lightly, lightly, I can't talk, lightly, and I will then make video number two, and it will be up shortly after this one. Thank you so much. Please, if you enjoy what you're doing with me here today, or you're inspired at all, or you feel like confident to try at least decoupaging, Please give me a comment underneath this video and give me a like. I'd certainly appreciate it. Have a nice day. You deserve it.